Welcome to the video series, The Liturgical Praxis of the Deacon. My name is Deacon Tom Foy, and I'm the Director of Divine Worship for the Diocese of Marquette. I received my liturgical training from the Liturgical Institute at Mandelein Seminary, where I received a Master's of Arts in Liturgy degree. My liturgical instructor was Father Douglas Martis. Throughout this series, I'll demonstrate the posture, words, and actions of an assisting deacon within the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Any numbers mentioned refer to the corresponding paragraphs within the 2011 General Instructions of the Roman Missal, or GERM. I will be assisted by Father Yerne Schuster, the parochial vicar or associate pastor of St. Peter Cathedral in Marquette, Michigan, where this series is filmed, and Mr. Jack Kinnanen, who will be our altar server. We will be wearing red vestments for no other reason than my personal preference. Of course, the color you wear will depend upon the liturgical season. Thank you for watching this video series, and may God bless you. The Liturgical Role of the Deacon Before we get into the actual role of the deacon, Let's see how the germ summarizes this role from number 171, which says, When he is present at the celebration of the Eucharist, a deacon should exercise his ministry wearing sacred vestments. In fact, the deacon assists the priest and walks at his side, ministers at the altar, both as regards to the chalice and the book, proclaims the gospel, and may, at the direction of the priest celebrant, give the homily, guides the faithful people by giving appropriate instructions, and announces the intentions of the universal prayer, assists the priest celebrant in distributing communion, and purifies and arranges the sacred vessels, carries out the duties of other ministers himself, if necessary, when none of them is present. because I have a shirt on that I don't need to cover completely with an amos, plus my elbow is pretty high. I'm not going to be using this today. Vesting. Vesting of a deacon is covered primarily in Numbers 119, 336, and 338. This, of course, is my elb. Proper vestiture for a deacon assisting at Mass is an elb with cincture, a deacon stole over the left shoulder and a dalmatic. A cincture. See, the best way to tie this I found is to go like this, make a loop, and just put this through here. And since the stole goes over the left shoulder and hangs down to my right, I also hang my cincture to the right. An amice should be worn if the elb does not fully cover the clothing under the elb. The delmatic may be omitted out of necessity or in cases of lower solemnity, but should be worn on Sundays and feast days. The stole is always worn under the delmatic. And this is the way we wear our microphones here. Of course, your microphone will be different how you wear it will be different. Vesting prayers may be said. The procession. The liturgical procession is a sacramental action that reminds us 
that we are a pilgrim people journeying from this veil of tears represented by the church nave to the joy of the new Jerusalem, the sanctuary. Its configuration depends upon the rank of the ministers within the procession. I have reviewed the guidelines within Ceremonies of the Modern Roman Rite by Peter J. Eliot and The Church Visible by James Charles Noonan, Jr., and have distilled the variations into the following diagram. If one deacon is assisting, he should carry in the Book of Gospels and walk out either on the right side of the presider, if a priest, or one step behind and one step to the side, if a bishop. If two deacons are assisting, the second should walk in on the right side of the priest or behind a bishop, and the two deacons should walk out side by side behind the presider. A few other items of importance are that the lectionary should never be carried in, number 120, and the deacon carrying the book of gospels walks directly to the altar, omitting the bow, number 173, and places the book of gospels upon it. I recommend laying it flat rather than standing it up to avoid the possibility of it falling over and placing it far enough in that it does not get in the way as the presider kisses the altar. Penitential Act. There are three forms of the Penitential Act in the Roman Missal. The first is the Confidior. The second form is rarely used in this diocese, and the third is known as the Tropes. If the Confidior is used, it should be started by the presider, not the deacon. It is always concluded with either the Kyrie or the Lord have mercy. This is usually led by the deacon or a cantor. In the third form, the deacon usually leads the tropes after the introduction by the presider. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Of the eight tropes listed in the Roman Missal, and its appendix number six. I recommend learning the one in the Missal in addition to numbers two and four, but this is entirely up to you. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. pray. 